Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Camino Cafe. I am so delighted today to have a very special guest, Tanya Valdez. And I first became acquainted with Tanya back way in the beginning of the whole COVID lockdown. And she was on a call that I was on with the American Pilgrim Group. And I was like, I've got to meet this woman. <laughs> like, I just feel like she's living the dream that I'm dreaming about. And I think a lot of other fellow pilgrims uh, are dreaming about as well. So Tanya, thank you so much for being willing to come on the Camino Cafe and talk to us. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So I wonder if for our viewers, if you could just kind of describe, I don't know if you can see out any of your windows right now where you are, but. I could walk out to the patio if you want me to. Oh, if you want to, fantastic. <laughs> okay. Give me and a. The reason I'm saying this, I was just looking at your website and it's so gorgeous, your home and your location. And I just wanted viewers, cause I know they're gonna be watching this and they won't have time to go look at your actual website right away. Um, labor of love. <laughs> <laughs> well, her labor of love, and as you can start seeing the reflection. I don't know with the sun out whether or not it's oh. going to be. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So there you are, viewers. This is how one pilgrim turned a dream into reality. So uh, look where she's living, everyone. <laughs> can you and see the okay? Yes, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Okay. Beautiful. So um, I wanted, wow, this is even better than I expected. So <laughs> the best thing about this is that Tanya is willing to share this because she turned this dream of hers into a reality and you can actually stay with her if you walk the coastal route, the Portuguese coastal route. So thank you for doing that. Oh, I'm, so, I'm excited uh, to share. Well, it's because it's a passion. It's easy to share your passion with others. Yeah, so let's start with, you know, you're an American and I listen to the Dan Mullins podcast. So I have a little bit of a, an advantage there of, of listening to that. And I highly recommend anyone's watching this to listen to that podcast because it's excellent. So Tanya uh, is American, lived in Iowa. Mm -hmm. So take us back to what was life like in Iowa and how did this girl from Iowa <laughs> end up living in Spain? Well, there was a little jog uh, to Colorado after Iowa, and okay. uh, I had cancer and um, found, out about, found out about the Camino when I was reading a book while going through chemotherapy. I read the, uh -huh. the, the book, The Pilgrimage by Paulo Coelho, okay. and had no, I had never heard of the Camino before. And I just I read the book and I, I thought, Does there, is there such a thing? I, I didn't, I really thought it was all a spiritual talk on, on Paulo Coelho's part is a metaphysical, metaphysical book and didn't really even realize that the Camino really existed. So after doing research and finding it really does exist, I, I, I walked the Camino in 2005 or 2006. I'm still trying to remember exactly what year it was and okay. fell in love. It was a great gratitude walk. Um, but fell in love with the Camino because it ended up being such a spiritual experience. And that's when the seed was planted to someday it would be nice. I, I fell in love with, there was a cute little uh, hospitalitero in Grañon. Her name is Marina. Maybe some of you have run across her. I don't know if, she, if she's still there or not, but someday I hope to go back and thank her. But that was when the seed was planted and um, what, 10, 15, 20 years later, <laughs> <laughs> I became serious. I came back several times walking more Caminos and I became more serious about having a place on the Camino Portuguese um, in 2014, 2015. So I walked the Camino Portuguese twice. Okay. I wanted to make sure this, this little village called Oya is a little fishing village and it really spoke to my, tugged at my heartstrings and spoke to me. So I wanted to see the second time I walked in 2018 again and wanted to make sure that this was still the place that I wanted to be. So okay, that's wow. Okay. So four or five Caminos under your belt. Yes, correct. Four and, yes. a, four and a half. Four and a half. <laughs> so you really did your research to make sure that this was yeah really thought, where you wanted to be. Yeah, I, I thought it was really important to do the lots of hours spent online looking at properties and um, making sure that this was the right decision. I would have loved to have been on the Invierno, but there just wasn't enough pilgrims to warrant it. Um, yeah. I hope someday the Invierno does pick up because it's a beautiful, beautiful Camino. 
Um, yeah. So yeah, I did a lot of research, long, long hours of research. <laughs> I wanted to go back and say that um, I'm so happy for you that you overcame the cancer and are a survivor and that's fantastic. So that's wonderful. You have a um, tendency to change your, it changes your life. Camino and cancer changes your life. You don't want to put anything on the back burner anymore. You want to live life at its fullest and you don't want to have any missed opportunities and you don't want to have any regrets. So crazy yeah, enough you really, to do this. <laughs> you, kind of, you really went through two types of a pilgrimage, really, you know, going through the cancer situation and then right after going on the pilgrimages on the Camino. So I think you've gone through so many transformational journeys. It's so inspirational. Um, Apollo's book, um, I think, is can be kind of really spiritual, kind of out there for people. You know, it's not the typical, most people see the way, right? And yeah. that's like a little more relatable. Yeah. Here to relate to, right? And so what was it about that book that you were like, yeah, this is, I think I could do this. Well, when I was reading the book, I didn't really realize that there was an actual Camino out there. I just thought he was just writing, you know, off the top of his head, like he usually does. Um, yes. But then towards the end of the book, I think in his foreword or is one of his, he talked about the Camino and I'm like, oh, I don't know, it piqued my interest living in Colorado at the time. I love to hike and walk and, and I love history and I've always loved Spain. I have family roots tied to Oviedo okay. and, and I don't know, it just piqued my interest and I thought, let's give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I love to travel. My passion has always been traveling as well as the Camino. So this was a different type of traveling and yeah. the actual walking. You have such a connection with the people and the culture. And it's now it's kind of now I'm spoiled and it's hard to travel without doing something like a Camino in other countries. Yeah, I mean, you know, like. I have no desire to go someplace and lay around by the pool, right? I think after going on the Camino, it was such a deeper transformational exactly. vacation. It was more than a vacation, right? It was like this. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, I, it, everything else will pale, pale in comparison, I think, going True. down the road. True. So I am um, preparing to talk with you. I was looking at your website and I just want to say it is a beautiful website on top of the fact that you live in a beautiful location the actual website's so lovely and I was I was struck I said okay what did she do before this because it seems like you must have had some kind of special job in the U.S. like what was your career and what did you do up to I was in retail management marketing um I did do some classes with um like oh what is it and I'm having now that I live in Spain, I'm losing my English, just so you know. So I, I, what the classes that you take where you put, you design stuff and you put it in the window so you get people to come in the door. Oh yeah, um, okay. I'm, draw, I'm drawing a blank right now what that was called. <laughs> Retail merchandising maybe? Retail merchandising, but there was an actual class that I took that was actually my favorite where you put stuff together in the window. See, it's a creative uh, venture, but I need to give credit where credit is due because Andrea, okay. Andrea is the one that actually built the website. But we talked okay. a lot. So I felt like she was, and she's also a pilgrim. So okay, so uh, it's was Andrea. So is that a friend of yours in Spain or she? So we connected. We connected through her husband, who's also a pilgrim, Bernard, okay. and he's okay. Irish. She's Canadian, but they're living in London. And she originally built websites. Well, she told me about one that she built for Harley Davidson in um, in London. So I hope I'm giving you the right information. But she and I talked a little bit. I felt like she was on the same page as I. We both had to have similar ideas. But yeah, she's done a fab fabulous job. She's she's wonderful. I highly recommend her. So I can't take I can't take full credit, but she's been fabulous. Yeah, Andrea. Duffy, well, I'm not sure of her last name because it's very hard to, um, the spelling is difficult. So okay. I hope it's okay. Duffy. You know what? After we finish the interview, we'll, we'll get her name and we'll throw it on the comments. So that way, if anyone wants to uh, look at her okay. work or hire her down the road, we can give her a nice right. little plug. I'm sure she would love to hear from people. I think, you know, 
she walked the Camino too. She's also a pilgrim. So I'm sure she would love to help others out as well. Yeah, exactly. Anything we can do to help fellow pilgrims. I'm yeah. all for that. So yeah. um, it's very clever, very creative. I, I, I love just the whole positioning of being able to look out your window. It, it's just wonderful. So everybody check that out. I will have that in the comments. He did a so great let's, job. yeah, it's wonderful. So let's go back. So you uh, go on your first pilgrimage after, sur after surviving cancer. And this is a walk of gratitude. You then fall in love with the Camino. You go back several times, you do your research. And how many homes would you say that you look, how many cities and how many homes did you look at before you said, Oya's the one? Oh, um, Gonzalo, bless his heart. Gonzalo from Santiago, who was a taxi driver at the time. All right. I had already seen some before I even met Santi, uh, before I met Gonzalo. But I'm thinking Gonzalo took me to at least 20, maybe more. If, if oh, like goodness. Yeah, I mean, he's been a true Camino angel. So um, I want to say I probably saw five or 10 before, but I don't know if 20 is even enough. He might have shown me more, but I had oh, a hard, it was a difficult time trying to get people to respond to my emails from overseas. Um, they mm -hmm. just wouldn't follow through or, or maybe it was my bad Spanish or English or Maybe they just didn't take me seriously because I was in America, but I, I definitely had much better luck with bringing Gonzalo on board. I mean, Gonzalo and I got connected through Brendan Bolton. Okay. So that's, I mean. Does that, is he now a realtor or he just kind of just did this to help you out? Um, Brendan or Gonzalo? Gonzalo. Gonzalo is actually has, now he has a bar. He was a taxi driver at the time, but now he has a bar. He transitioned. Uh -huh to a bar owner, which is Conga okay. 7, which is right next to the, um, the name of the bar is Conga 7. That's also the name of his, the address of his bar. It's close okay. to the Santiago Cathedral. So it's within That's walking nice. distance. So I highly recommend you going in and saying hi to Gonzalo, who's a true Camino angel. Oh, oh, I can't wait. Wonderful. Yeah. He's adorable. Sure. He's sweetheart, sweetheart. And his English is perfect. He spent oh, some time right. in the United States, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, if I can find a website or a Facebook page for him, I'll, I'll also put that in the comments. So when you started looking, were you like, I, did you have this vision in mind of, of what you really wanted? Is that what took so long to find a place or was it that, I mean, I've yeah. heard that it's very difficult to buy things in Spain. Um, it, it, yeah. It was, there was another Camino in, in that. <laughs> <laughs> Between the visa, the doing the visa paperwork, and then doing the process of buying the house, it was like the visa paperwork prepared me for the the, the difficulty be, for the house, and then the renovations. Um, yeah, it's been um, it's been a journey. <laughs> yeah. it's been a journey. When you, when you look at what you've gone through in the last several years, what would you say when you when you look at your actual caminos that you walked? What would you say was your low point and your high point? Now we talk, we're talking about Caminos and specifically not the, not the house process. Yeah, we'll do that one next. So okay. now we're going to talk about your walk. So when you were out on pilgrimage, when you look back, can you say, wow, that was my lowest point on one of my walks? Yeah, it was, um, yeah, I was walking, I, Start out walking by myself, but then I met up with a nice lady from, from the United States by the name of uh -huh. Sylvia. We had a really long, wrong stretch one day. Uh, I think it was like 34 kilometers and we were towards the end of the stretch. We were in a bar. <laughs> and I, cause there, I don't think there was like very, it, it was on the Camino Portuguese. I don't okay. remember the name of the town and I don't remember the name of the bar, but the bartender or the owner who was the bartender, yeah. he knew that I was so frustrated. He read a poem in Portuguese or in Spanish, I can't remember. And then she translated, Sylvia translated it for me. The fact that he knew how low I was, I was about ready to give up that day. I just said, I don't know why, I just had had it. And, uh, and, and I don't, I haven't had that many times on the Camino that it's been like that. The yeah. fact that he took the time to read that beautiful poem and I, I can't tell you the words right now. 
Yeah. Because he really cared about the pilgrims and really cared enough to share that poem. It was a special pilgrims poem. It gave me the strength and I, and I, I got to rest a little bit of it. It gave me the strength to go to soldier on the, the final, I don't know how many k- kilometers we had left, but it was, it was a difficult day. At that time, there weren't that many places to stay on the Camino Portuguese in 2015. So okay. it was a really long stretch that day. Yeah. Were you just feeling tired or, you know, what, yeah, what do you I know, what, feeling I, was at that point? I think I get emotional when I get tired. Okay. And, and we, the cobblestones kill me. <laughs> They're hard on your back. I don't know if you've walked the Camino Portuguese yet, but. Uh, no, I'm looking well, forward to it. My dad and I are coming. <laughs> beautiful as well. I have to say the bad things. I, I thought it was more difficult, the Camino Portuguese, because of the cobblestones. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Sure so, what, what, six souls. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think so that bar owner at that point is he, he's looking at you, he's seeing you get emotional and he just all of a sudden says, hey, I want to read this poem to you. What was that moment like? I mean, I would imagine tears or. Yeah, yeah, because the people, the people are so lovely that they, the people are so lovely that they care enough to want to nurture you and they knew that he knew that I was ready to give up I was <laughs> I just had had it yeah tears I would tears but they were happy tears in the same token that they were emotional tears you know it was kind of like walking into Santiago the first time emotional oh, tears yeah. and happy tears at the same time yeah right you you have so many emotions it's so powerful all the way around yeah yeah right. absolutely so so now let's flip to Lakala, and you are, you've, you've picked the place in Oya, which is beautiful. And now you've got Lakala and you're, you're getting ready to start it. So let's go back before our pre pandemic. Hmm. You're getting ready to remodel it. Yeah. The renovation. Did low, yeah. Did you have a low moment where you said, Tanya, what have you done? go back to the U.S. <laughs> this is crazy. Two or three or more. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what that was like. And, and, you know and what it I'm usually to... requires a bottle of wine or two. <laughs> <laughs> what kind? Which one are you choosing for that? Is uh, it a <laughs> oh, it's definitely a Spanish red. Oh, for sure. <laughs> um, it's di- it's di- <laughs> And it's so cheap here. That's the thing. I'm like thinking, I don't think I've ever drank so much wine in my life since the COVID. And it's a good thing I'm in Spain because <laughs> I couldn't afford to drink all the wine that I drank <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> that is great. That is great. Um, it's so pretty COVID. Tell us about one of those times where you just said that that's it. I, I, this was not a good idea. I'm done. I got to go back home. Or was there a moment like that? Did, did you just always oh, feel oh, like? Yeah. No, what's oh, no, no, no. There's been several. <laughs> there's been yeah. several. <laughs> no, there's been several. I want to say the most memorable is probably when Susie and Furman came in to rescue me. I, I just, between the bureaucracy and, and the lack of communication because of the renovations and the contractor and uh, it's just, it seems like it was one thing after another, after another. And I kept thinking, okay, next week, it, you know, day by day, just like, you know, take it step by step, day by day, trying not to get overwhelmed. But I mean, it just seemed like it was one thing after another. Um, and I finally said, I, I was at the point where, yeah, it was, a, it was a breaking point. And I just said, okay, let me call Susie. <laughs> And hopefully then maybe I just wanted somebody who had gone through what I had gone through, like a support person. <laughs> and she has been fabulous. And they showed up that I was as soon as the COVID, as soon as the borders opened up, then she and Furman came. And I tell you what, I, I just, you ha- I have to focus and remember that the reason I'm doing this is for the pilgrims. It's not about me. It's about the pilgrims. So, but she, oh. they're so lovely, the both of them. And they came and spent the weekend together. And it was, 
just have to focus. And I, I luckily I picked a good place to live because I have the mountains and I have the ocean so I can go outside and, and live commune with nature and like walking a Camino and remind yeah. myself the reason I'm doing this. I have to refocus. I love that. You've got your anchor <laughs> there, right? You anchor of, wow, you have this huge intention of helping pilgrims. And when you look back and you remember that, that gives you the strength to do it. And like you said, that connection to nature, which is, I think the two things that we really um, feel when we're actually out walking the pilgrimage. Now, Susie owns her own, right? Susie and Firmer, you're talking about they, what is, what is the name of her albergue? Hers is Casa Susie and she's in Trabadello yeah. okay. on the Camino right. Frances. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I know I follow her on Instagram and yeah. she always has really nice posts. So what was it that Susie and Furman came to say, you know, like, was there something that she reminded you of us else other than what we were just talking about? Or did she say something that you were just like, yes, that's what I needed to hear. Yeah. I think she had some moments where she said that she was ready to give up too. I don't know if she had as many, but I know that she's going through a lot right now too with the COVID mm -hmm. and, and they have a roof situation that they're trying to deal with. Yeah. So just the fact that she had been through it and, and she came with so much love. She brought flowers from her garden. She brought homemade jam. She brought, which is like her hand. Oh, I think a bottle of red, a bottle of white. I, it just seemed like it was just like loads. And it wasn't about the gifts. It was just about the love. I, she, Susie mm -hmm. is just about love. Hmm. And that's wow. what I, it's Thank support you. and love. And that's what I needed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can imagine. Well, I remember when I first uh, met you, that was, gosh, probably back in March, April of when COVID was um, first coming around. And I, I remember thinking to myself, oh my goodness, she's so close to opening. And what, of all years, you know, and um I really felt for you because I couldn't imagine here you were, you know, at the tail end of remodeling, you're getting excited to open and then we're all <laughs> stopped. <laughs> so um, I can't imagine how difficult that's been. And I'm so happy for you that things are starting to turn around and that hopefully people will see this interview and be like, hey, I wanna go stay with her. So tell me a little bit about with your experience of being a, you know, five-time pilgrim, what is it that you hope to bring to the end that you know pilgrims want? You're like, why should they come stay with you? I wanted to open up my home. I wanted to feel like home to people. I, um, I got sick. One of my, one of my walks, I got super sick because there was no dryers. I was walking with wet clothes because you know it's Galicia and you, you hang your clothes up on the hanger hoping that they'll dry the next morning but with the 100 percent humidity they don't dry so you get to walk with those clothes wet the next morning and it's cold <laughs> i think i got walking pneumonia <laughs> and i just wanted i just wanted to be home and in my bed and curled up because i was sick <laughs> you know when you get you just want to be in your own bed so the idea is a relaxing calming place by the ocean also, I love having the monastery nearby. So there's a little history, um, yeah. just about opening up my home to people and whatever they want. They're allowed to stay as long as they want. If they want to take two or three days or a week, I'm happy to do whatever. We can walk in the woods. We can walk in the mountain, whatever they take, go see a monastery tour. Um, just opening up my home to pilgrims, just to make them feel welcome. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think they're going to want to stay for a while when they see it because it's beautiful. I love that. I, the longer, the better. <laughs> um, I I feel like, <laughs> oh, I bet you do. Have you had anyone stay recently? Like what's been going on most recently? Last time I had a, a, a group of eight pilgrims, rogue, rogue pilgrims, because they weren't supposed to be walking, show up at my yeah. doorstep and asked if I could stay and I'm like sure <laughs> I you know you're not going to turn pilgrims away right. so and they right. some of them decided to stay an extra day or two so it was nice to have that company especially because it was around Thanksgiving but that's oh. the last yeah it was perfect timing yeah. so um, that, that was the last time I had pilgrims okay and now the Portuguese 
route, is that completely closed right now? Can people walk? You could walk, Texas. theoretically, you could walk in Galicia. You okay. could not, you cannot walk from Portugal because the border is closed from Portugal to Spain. Okay. So theoretically you could walk right now because they just opened up the borders from Aguarda to Santiago because it's all in okay. Galicia. Okay, okay, perfect. So one of the things I wanted to ask you about, I knew there was something about your energy that I always loved. And then when I went on your website, um, you have kind of like a tagline that says, what is your soul saying? Oh, yeah. Tell me about how that came about because I feel that energy from you that there's something very soulful about you, about your journey and about Lakala. <sighs> Wow, <laughs> a loaded question, Lee. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Um, wow, I, I think the cancer oh, and the Camino, huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It, it instills living in the moment and taking life by the horns and and just going for it. But but peaceful and a cop. I mean, I mean for me. I'm trying to have more peace and tranquility in my life. Um, yeah. The idea being that living in Spain would ha hopefully help me realize that capability to just live in the moment and um, and experience as much as you can, but but be tranquil and enjoy. I, difficult to put into words, Lee. <laughs> I also had a grandfather that passed away from cancer and he's always been like a lighthouse to me. Um, mm. He had a lantern as our symbol of our family. So I feel oh. like that, that my family has helped me tremendously and supported me in this. Um, but I also feel like he, I don't know if you've had this experience, but walking the Camino, previous generations I feel like they talk to me they come and talk to me I don't know you might think I'm out there but <laughs> <laughs> they show, they, it seems like there's signs out there that I is it's kind of like the yellow arrows if, if the yellow is arrow, arrow is there you should you should live live on that and take that yeah. moment oh, I so identify with you because like my grandfather who's passed um often is someone that um, Rebecca Scott has said on a call that I've been on that when we walk, we can invite others to walk with us in spirit, right? And so, you know, I'll invite St. James or I'll invite my grandfather or I'll invite someone. So that's one of the people that I will invite is my grandfather and listen to his words, his wisdom. I love the lighthouse. Oh my, that or the, uh, the lantern, it's so moving. That is beautiful. When you, when you realize that your soul was saying, we're gonna leave the U.S. Your dream is to leave Spain. <laughs> That's not an everyday thing that happens, right? So it sounds like your family was supportive, but you know what did your family? And there's your cat. <laughs> your cat's made the appearance. <laughs> I love um, it. Um, we'll have to get the cat and the dog on our video before we end. Um, well, there's nothing more than I love as a pilgrim. It was to get somewhere and be able to pet somebody's dog because I miss my own dog so much, right? Um, when you said to your family, hey, I'm, I'm packing up and this is, this is what my soul wants. What were the reactions? And, um, you know, can you share with us the kind of the support you got or maybe the kind of um, questions that you really had to overcome? Because I know sometimes people can put questions in your mind that you're like, oh, wow, maybe they're right. You know, so how did you move past that? Sometimes I have selective listening. <laughs> now, I have to say that my mom has been super supportive of my dream. Um, give a lot of kudos to her. Um, right. She also loves traveling. So um, my kids were quiet. <laughs> they didn't say no, but they were quiet. So I feel like they know that this was my dream and my passion though. So they... I think they felt like they couldn't say anything or step in the way. It is. Are difficult. they all in Iowa? Um, one lives in in Colorado, in Denver area. 
and then the other one okay. lives in Iowa and, okay. and the grandchildren too. And that's for me, that's the hardest part. Not that I don't love my kids because I do, yeah, but, exactly. but I we do Zoom a lot. We do Facebook and Zoom. And so it, I get to see them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's give a shout out. What's mom's name? Sonia. 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 She's in Australia. She's been in Australia visiting my sister and, and, um, She's been stuck there because of COVID, but I think it's actually a good thing that she's stuck there because I think the COVID there is not, is doing a lot better than it was like in the United States. So yeah, you had to be yeah. stuck somewhere. That's a good place. Yeah, and then uh, your, yeah. and your kids, what are your kids' names? Ryan and Corey. Ryan's the oldest and Corey is my youngest. He's the one that lives in Colorado and Ryan right. lives in Colorado. Yeah. Shout out to are the grandbabies? Are they old enough to watch a video? Would they know if they heard Maybe, their name? maybe Maverick, <laughs> Maverick and in Indy in Colorado, and Rihanna and Rose in Iowa. They're twins. Yeah. Oh, beautiful yeah. names. Beautiful names. All right. Yeah. So it sounds. Like I, I can imagine the kids being quiet. I have a, a twenty-year-old, soon to be twenty-one, and I think uh, if I made this announcement, there would be support. But you know, that's a lot to take, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I liked your idea about the selective listening, right? So when your soul's talking, <laughs> you got to kind of be selective, right? <laughs> I know. So I if, just, yeah, go ahead. I feel like sometimes I put blinders on, and if and once I get set on a, a certain thing, that it just it has to happen. I don't know. I'm getting a little bit more stubborn in my old age. <laughs> Aren't we all <laughs> we kind of need to right yeah and cra and be a little crazy too <laughs> yeah. but one of the things um i really noticed about you is you just have you just laugh about life's problems were you always like this were you like this growing up where you were just able to kind of look at things and take things kind of a little more lightly i wouldn't say that i take them more lightly um, it's just my coping mechanism, I think, is that if I get nervous, I laugh. If I'm thinking, I mean, I do laugh a lot, but it's a cope. I think it's more of a coping me mechanism. Okay. Okay. I, I mean, I do like to laugh. I mean, especially when you have all this stress going on right now, I think it's really important to laugh. Today, yes. having a glass of wine with my friends and they made me laugh and I was like, I need to do more of this because yes. things are so serious right now and we need to laugh more. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I thought when um, I listened to your podcast with Dan Mullins, I really, it really felt good to hear you laugh. Oh, right, good. because I think so, so many interviews that have been done over this past year, you know, ones I've done and others have done is, you know, we've all kind of had this kind of dark cloud over us. You know, we're all pilgrims. We, we want to be on this journey. We want to be back in Spain or whatever. And, and sometimes you can kind of feel that heaviness. And I felt like after I listened to that interview, I was like, wow, I just felt uplifted just listening to you and knowing that, you know, everything's going to work out. Thank you, Lee, for saying that, because I'm kind of self-conscious about my laugh. So really? I've, had, I've had my college teachers say, have you been drinking before you came to class? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> this is just me. <laughs> well, I think sometimes we um, are, you know, we're, we're kind of told to be quiet and be serious and, you know, be, you know, that, that being serious means you're a hard worker, but if you're, you know, laughing doesn't kind of fit that mold sometimes, at least I feel like in the U S and I feel like, Bringing some lightness to life is what we all need right now. And, no, and that's what it, the lantern. Yes. Yeah. Right? Right? Exactly. Yes. It's exactly it, right? It's like you have two choices in life, right? You can either lift people up right. or we can bring them all down with our energy. And, you know, I've had those moments where I've done that, right? And I hang up the call and I think, well, I just ruined their day too, <laughs> right? When I could have made the choice to be the lantern. Yeah. And I think you so, so vividly show um, how important it is to be the lantern. And I can't imagine a person that's watching this that won't want to stay with you because I can't imagine showing up at your doorstep after a long walk and knowing that I'm going to have somebody that's going to lift me up. 
That's just beautiful. So thank you for being a light to others. That's what we all need right now. That's really and, special to me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I'm hoping, you're welcome. I'm hoping you're getting those lights from the people that you're living near. And I know that as pilgrims start staying with you, as restrictions lift, that you're also going to be getting that light of people coming in and talking. And that's going to be so beautiful. So wonderful. I'm going to be hunting down those pilgrims. Watch out. <laughs> well, my dad and I will be two of the pilgrims that will be coming as soon as he and I can go on the Portuguese. That's our, that's our plan. So I hope that we can stay with you. And I so appreciate your time. I think I could talk to you forever, but I feel selfish in keeping you on longer. Um, thank you so much. You're always welcome back to the Camino Cafe anytime that you want to talk about anything. And um, I just want viewers to know that uh, I will have your website and your Facebook page and everything as easy link so they can get to you and, and find you when they're ready to make reservations. Awesome. And um, I guess we could, we could just end this with, you know, if, if somebody is going through something, you know, I think as uh, we go through life, you know, there's always things that are going to happen to us. And I just wonder if you could maybe offer to someone who's sitting at home watching this and that they're going through some kind of life challenge. Why would you encourage them to go on the Camino? Why should they do it? My biggest lesson learned or reminded or enforced, I don't know what the word to, to, to strengthen, you know, this lesson before, but you don't really actually use it. So you don't, you don't remember things and, and, and you can handle anything. If you break it down day by day, step by step, try not. I, I think a lot of people look at the overwhelming picture and I think it's so much easier, especially in, in, in difficult times or challenging times just break it down day by day, step by step. Yeah, I think if you can do that, and I do think that faith helps too. I've, I have a little chapel nearby that I have gone to a lot lately. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I just go in there just to be quiet, um, it's just good for the soul. Good for the yeah. soul. So take it step by step, step, step by step, step, and have hopefully, faith. Hopefully. Yeah, that's so true, right? You know, because when you're looking at a pilgrimage and you're looking at, you know, you could look at, you've got a day's walk of say 20 miles or, or whatever. And if you look at that daily total, that seems just overwhelming. But yeah. as uh, Father Kevin Codd always talks about kind of just going from point to point. And instead, if you looked at it as not the full 20 miles, but maybe getting from this little village to the next little village or from, he's even, uh, one call I was on with him, he said, just thinking about point to point of from one pilgrim to the next pilgrim that you're going to talk about. And then before you know it, exactly, there. Exactly. Just get what you can done. What I just saw it on not too long ago. I don't know if it was a Buddhist saying, just do what you can do. And before you know it, you're done or you, you know, you're getting there. You're at least moving forward. Yeah. Great. Well, I just want to say congratulations because it's so beautiful to see someone's dream come true. Thank and you. Also, I also want to say that part of the name of Lakala is also, it's a pilgrim's inn. And that to me means it's everybody's inn. It's the pilgrim's inn. <laughs> so I love that. I love well, that. And it's, Welcome. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful to see someone who has, you worked hard for it and your dream has come true. And it's such a beautiful dream. And the fact that it's like, you're saying, it's not something that you're, you just created for just you to hold on to and have, this is something you are sharing and giving back to the pilgrim community. And that is a gift because you could have just gone there and just lived in this beautiful home, <laughs> you know, you could have kept it to yourself. But I think sharing it just makes the dream even more beautiful. So congratulations. Thank you. And uh, I can't wait to come see you there and meet you actually in person. <laughs> I'm looking forward but, to it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, buen camino. And um, thank you so much for uh, doing this interview. Thank I'm you. I'm going to stop our recording, but you and I'll stay on for a second. Okay. Thank you everyone for watching our video and uh, I hope that you will check out La Cala when you are on the coastal route. I know you're going to, I don't even have to tell you that. I know you will. <laughs>